Okay, here we are. Whoops, Daddy, there's got you rocking and rolling. Uh, this is my first attempt at doing a video broadcast. Okay, my name is Chuck Jones. I'm with River City Kites. And this is the back room of my kite store, River City Kites, that's located at 5519 Highway 153 in Hickson, Tennessee. Uh, suite number six. If you want to get hold of me, my number is 423-648-KITE. That's 5483. Just a little bit of, uh, about myself and why am I doing this. I've been flying kites since I was a kid. Never stopped. When everybody else quit, gave up kite flying and went on to other things, I continued to fly kites. And I've uh, been a member of the American Kite Flyer Association off and on since 1978. Uh, helped start the Scenic City Kite Club back in the early 90s. And I started this business in the early 90s as a vendor's cart, okay, where I rolled around and did kite workshops and things at the Kaleidoscope, Kids Kaleidoscope Kite Festival in the, in the spring and all kinds of other uh, events. And then I went back to teaching I taught uh, middle and high school math uh, from uh, for uh, almost 30 years. Okay, so uh, I'd like to do a little bit of a kite uh, video, hopefully every weekday. Okay, so we'll just see how that works. I'll be putting it up on YouTube and my Facebook page and my Instagram page. Okay, we'll see how that works. Okay, so what I have here is, uh, I figured on it's a day like today, here we are, March 23rd, 19, uh, 2020. We're, at the, we're not quite, I don't think, at the height of the coronavirus epidemic, pan pandemic. Uh, uh, people in Chattanooga, Tennessee and Hickson haven't quite, I don't think, gotten as serious about this as we need to be. I don't think our Tennessee governor has gotten as serious as he needs to be yet. Uh, and it's going to hit. But for right now, all the restaurants and, and uh, gyms are all closed. Uh, uh, most everything's closed unless you're taken out. Uh, I started this business, this kite store business, in February 1st, 2020. Uh, right about that time, uh, it seems to rain an awful lot. And then the coronavirus hit. So I haven't made a lot in terms of sales. My grand opening has been pushed back to May 16th, uh, the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. I'll be having things going on here at the store. On the 16th will be the grand opening. And then uh, on the 17th, I, which is a Sunday, I don't usually open my business that day, but I'll be out at the kite, at the sculptures in this, I'll be out at the sculpture field in Mon of Montague Park out there on Polk Street uh, flying kites, having a fun fly Sunday afternoon. Okay, so I hope to see you. Uh, what can you do on a day when it's rainy, okay, and there's a coronavirus going on? First of all, in terms of the coronavirus, we're talking about social distancing. Social distancing requires us to be at least six feet away from other people. Well, that is easy to do when you're flying a kite. Most people stand six to 20 to 50 feet away from each other when they're flying a kite anyway. So this is a, this is a natural, uh, it's great to get outside, enjoy the sun when it's out there, even when it's cloudy, a lot of times you'll find that there's wind at the sculpture field. Another good place to fly would be the Chattanooga, uh, where the uh, uh, Tennessee uh, Valley Authority uh, rec, center, uh, rec uh, area up there at Chickamauga Dam. Most elementary schools and high schools and middle schools have a field where you can go and fly and walk around any place where you typically go for a walk, even the river walk. I've flown kites while walking on the river walk. I call it a kite walk, okay? But moving on, what if you're stuck inside? It's raining outside. What can you do? So uh, one kite that is a really a lot of fun, and uh, it can be done in many different, it comes in many different forms, and that's the miniature kite. A miniature kite can be made indoors and flown indoors, okay? Let me give you an example. Uh, here we have the uh, uh, the Hata. This 
This is the Hatakite. It's a, uh, a Japanese uh, uh, design uh, after, after uh, it's a fighter kite. If you take the tail off, it becomes a fighter kite. Okay, so this is a Hata uh, kite, Japanese kite. And you notice even indoors, I've got, the, I've got a thread on a stick and I'm flying it around the room and that right there flies. You keep going around circles until you get dizzy and fall over or you can uh, walk down the hall for doing it. So that's a great fun activity. It's a good, uh, easy kite to make. Here's another kite, which is uh, uh, typically a favorite of most people, and that's the butterfly kite. So the butterfly, you see, the butterfly, the butterfly flies really well. And this one right here is made from a towel from a, a, a restroom where we then uh, spray it with some varnish to stiffen it up a little bit, okay? On the back side, on the, uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, the spine, you can't really see the spine, and the, the, the sticks are all made with monofilament line. And you think, well, what do I do about monofilament? Well, monofilament line, if you, uh, which is fishing line, okay? If you take fishing line and wrap it around a piece of plywood, put it in the oven, and bake it at 300 degrees for a, a period of about 30 minutes. Okay, take it out of the oven, lay it up on the side, uh, lay the piece of plywood up against the, uh, the wall somewhere, let it cool off. After it's cooled, you can cut those pieces of monofilament that you wrapped around the plywood. You can cut them off and they'll be straight. Okay, no longer curly like monofilament fishing line tends to be when it comes off the, rule, the, the reel. Okay, here I've got some 25-pound uh, test, and I've got some, I think, 30-pound test. Looks like 18-pound. It's, it's less. So you can use different tests for different strengths. Okay, another uh, a stick that I like to use, and this is easily uh, procured. Okay, right. Okay, this is grass. Okay, yeah, you know, grass, uh, weeds. I found these weeds uh, along the river at the Tennessee River, at Rivermont Park, I think it was. Uh, I also find them right alongside my, my street when I'm walking my dog. Okay, so uh, a lot of these grasses are really very handy when it comes to miniature kites as well as bigger kites. Uh, I've made kites that are a foot big with these right here, and they do pretty good. It's amazing how strong they are. It's a naturally tapered rod. Okay, that's the big thing in, in, in kites and uh, kite making is where you're using tapered rods. Uh, graphite, carbon graphite is usually what you're using on the big kites. Okay, here's another kite. These are kites that uh, were, uh, are examples of, of kites that uh, some friends of mine made. Okay, uh, can you see that? Sorry. Okay. Mukaku. Here's a nice diamond kite, okay, and uh, this was uh, made by a company called Charon, which is uh, out of uh, Missouri. They uh, are made up of a couple, uh, Sharon and Ron Linder, great people up there in the Midwest, okay. Another kite that I've, I like, which I can't find right now, is a kimono. Uh, and then the and, and then there's the Saruga kite. The Saruga kite, you can hardly see that. That's a Japanese kite also, made with a plastic bag and some sticks. We're gonna make we're gonna make what I call the shield kite today. And you might ask. Well, why a shield kite? Well, we all need we all need a little armor in these days. Okay, so we're going to make a kite that's uh, in the shape of a shield. Okay. Okay, these are actually two halves. And the way we do it is we take our, our half and we put it First of all, let's make a pattern, okay? Because here I got lots of patterns, but what if you don't have a pattern? How do you do it? Okay. Let me 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Make your you're just putting this up on the edge of your cardstock. It could be uh, card out uh, thin card out of a shirt box or or okay I don't know. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna come down. Okay, I can't use my pattern because you won't have your pattern, will you? You're using a 30 degree angle here, a 60 degree angle. I'm sorry. Okay, 60 degree angle, and you can come out away from the edge at 60 degrees. Okay. Now, it's uh, uh you can also use a protractor to get that 60 degrees. Okay, lay it up there. You probably got a protractor sitting around in your geometry bag. And here we go. It's, it's 30 degrees from down here. I'm sorry, 60 degrees from down there or 30 degrees from down below. Okay, so this is a 60 degree angle here. Okay, and then you're gonna come out. Let's say, uh, oh, let's say you come on out. Uh, how, how far is this one right here? Uh, this one is uh, three inches. So you measure out three inches. Put a mark. Okay, and then how far down are we gonna go? We're gonna go down about five inches, okay, from the top. Okay. Okay, now notice, here it is, but where do we get this uh, uh, curve right down here, okay? You can use all kinds of curves. You could uh, you could start off by doing something like this, using the edge of a curve, or get a circle that's about right and heads up in that direction, okay? Uh, or, or goes, you're gonna go uh, perpendicular first, okay? And then you're gonna head on up, just draw it, get your straight edge and draw it up to that next point up there, okay, or just keep on and freehand it, okay, until it's going straight up right here, okay, and then that's where we're going to be, we're going to draw a line straight across uh, from the uh, edge here, okay, that's where your cross sticks, that's where your uh, sticks going to come across, and you can tie your uh, you can cut a little gap out right below that horizontal line in order to create a place to tie your string to, okay? Now, I'm going to put this stuff aside for right now. So let's say, then we go ahead and cut the thing out, okay? Now you've got, you got it all cut out. So you've got your shield tight. Now we want to cut out that little notch there in the middle too. So we'll know where it's going to be. Let's try this. Will this be easier? Is this easier to see? Oh, yes. Ugh. Okay, now, what next? We'll get you, I gotta get our material out. So we're gonna use uh, either, oh, I didn't get the material out for this. Uh, we're going to use, uh, well, let's just use this right here. Okay. This is a tissue paper. Okay, it could be 20 pound. Okay, this is a 20 pound uh, weight tissue paper, but most tissue is 10 pounds, and that's fine. You're going to fold it over so you get a nice uh, folded edge here. And you're going to lay this pattern, if I can get it, you're going to, you're going to lay this pattern so that the, the longest straight edge here where your notch is, is right along the curve, the fold of the, of the paper. And you're going to mark it with a pencil or a pen here. Uh, excuse me. And you cut it out. So not, don't unfold it yet, but cut it out now. Uh, nice and neat. Like so. Okay. Now when we unfold this, you 
unfold it, you will have the, uh, the form for the, for the shield card. Let's move this a little closer. Okay. Now, I would like to use a little bit of my grass. Okay, but you could use the grass or you could use uh, another piece of monofilament. Okay, I'm going to flip it over so that the crease is down. Okay, it's opening up. Okay, I'm going to take my piece of grass and this grass is, oh, it's been, first of all, I picked it in the fall and then it dried uh, naturally. I put it up in the window of my car actually and it uh, dried from there. Uh, so it's best to pick it in the fall uh, and then let it dry. You can pick it throughout the summer, but just make sure you let it dry first, okay? And then you're going to put this, the thick end up, okay? And you're going to take your scissors and snip it right there, okay? So you know where to snip it. Let's see here. Okay, right there. Then I pull out some of my handy-dandy tape. Okay, I like to use... Uh, this clear cellophane tape. Uh, sometimes you can take it and rip it lengthwise. Okay, but this is pretty narrow stuff already. Okay, a little too much actually. You only need enough to hold the, the stick down. And the stick does not need much to be held down. <clears throat> and then you use the, another piece at the bottom. There you have it. Okay. Now you have that uh, on the uh, on the thing. And you get your monofilament line. Let's see what gets coming down here. see if it's long enough yeah okay good okay I'm gonna take my monofilament line and I'm gonna move it I'm gonna uh, uh, this one's actually a straight piece of, of uh, monofilament I'm gonna go straight across from one side to the other okay so let's snip it right there we'll get us another piece of tape I think I will split this one okay it's hard to see this I know you could also, of course, cut it with a pair of scissors. Good. Okay, I'll put one at one wing tip and one at the other wing tip. Hardest thing is picking these things up. Okay, if there's a bow to it, make sure the bow is going into the kite, uh, bowed out. flat do the other side you don't want there to be any bow unnatural bow uh, because you put pressure on it uh, and this should be about right okay uh, okay I'm not sure if you can see that uh, it's, it's goes straight across and then there's a grass in the middle okay forgot to put that hole in there. It's best to do that before you, you do this. Let's see, I could potentially snip it right here. Make sure you don't cut your stick though. Okay, now we need the string. Okay, so what do I use for string? Uh, you can use a thread. The thread works good. I use some of this green thread right here. Okay, what I want to do now, <clears throat> this is, well, I'll just show you here. You just take your, uh, take your piece of grass that you didn't use, the part that you cut off. And just use that as a little thread here and push it through. Mm -hmm. We hope 
but hopefully this is going to work okay. Push it through. Yep. Come back around, push it through that. Go around the stick and then back down through the hole. Pull it through. Now tie a knot right here, okay? So you want to tie a good, just an overhand knot. You know, like, like the one you start tying with your, your shoe and then go ahead and do it again so that it ties a knot. Two overhand knots will secure it. And then you can snip the edge off. Okay. Now, this right here will not fly by itself, okay? It really still needs a tail, okay? So what do I do about tails? What I do is I take crepe paper, party, paper, party streamers, Okay, and I, I cut it in half, and then I cut it in half again. And I've got a green one here, so let's just use it out. In fact, this one here could be cut one more time even. Okay, and how can I do that so I don't spend the whole day cutting streamers? I can fold them. Kind of fold them up, roll them up for as long as I want. Fold them up, fold them up. Yeehaw. Fold them up, fold them up. Yeehaw. Okay. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. Okay, get them all nice and straight together. And I'm just going to cut them off. Right, cut them right down through the middle here. Got to make sure you keep them together. Okay, there we go. Them again, and there you have two streamers. You can use one or you can use two. I think I'll try to use two this time. I'm not sure if I've ever done that. Okay, you get you a little bitty piece of tape. I'm talking about a little bitty. I'm talking about maybe, oh, uh, just not that much. Put it on the back of the kite. Now it's good to go back and, and increase that tape because that tape has a mind of its own. But if you crease it yourself, then it get, helps give that kite the bow that it needs. Now you take your string out, and we're going about two to three feet of string. Okay, I can take my take a stick. Okay, wrap it around. Oh, that's too big. Too big a stick. I like flimsy sticks. Flimsy sticks work pretty good. It could be another piece of grass. It could be uh, put some tape on there just to secure it. Let's try it out. Mm, oh yeah, that baby's flying. That baby fly in. Okay. Now, now here's the here's the deal. Okay, you're at this point right here, so you think, okay, I'm finished. I can go out and fly them. But no, really, either before you get to this point or uh, at this point, let's do it. Let's decorate it because what we're trying to do here. Where are my markers? What I'm trying to do is create a shield, some armor against all this coronavirus, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a picture on there that will allow us to uh, indicate, to show to the world and to that coronavirus that we mean business and that coronavirus is no match to us, okay? So we're going to draw a nice picture on there, something that will help us to ward against uh, this bad coronavirus. And one way I like to do that is by fighting back with uh, good news, happy times, and times yet to be had. Fun times, okay? So I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Uh, <coughs> I don't have any colors in here. 
So you can try and get some colors. You can use crayons on this, of course. You can use uh, markers. Right. Well, that was right, wasn't it? Okay, let's see here. There you go, that's me sticking my tongue out at the coronavirus. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. Doesn't have to be fancy. I can go, in. I can get even fancier than this. Okay, and then, uh, then I'm ready to go out and fly. Okay, or go inside and fly, because we're flying these babies in the house. Okay, <clears throat> now what can you do after this? <clears throat> well, there's a lot of different things you can do with kites when it comes to math and science. First of all, why in the world do kites even fly? Okay, why do kites fly? We are uh, going to look at that. Okay, we've got about three minutes to show you this because it's about time for this uh, episode to be over. Here we have a kite. Okay, here we have a kite. It's flying. Okay, I bet these words are all backwards. Who knows? Okay, why does a kite fly? First of all, you have uh, the kite flying against the wind. It's facing the wind. The wind's coming this way. Okay, as it hits that wing surface, some of the air goes over the kite and some of it goes under the kite. The, the air molecules going under the kite have to go faster, uh, have to go uh, less distance than the air molecules on the top because the air molecules on top are hitting that surface and they're bouncing up and then coming back down. They've got a further distance to go, so the stuff on top, that fast air movement creates a vacuum, a lower pressure. Okay, and it's just like a vacuum cleaner. It sucks it up, and the, the, the air sucks it up into the air like that, and that's what we call lift. Now, all the uh, 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 knots and the, the tape that we put on the kite, and, and uh, uh, the kite itself creates turbulence, and that's what we call drag. Okay, the weight of the kite pulls it down toward the earth. Okay, and uh, we don't have uh, power or thrust in this uh, in a kite, but we do have the line tension, and the line tension helps to pull the kite down. It also helps to pull the kite forward. Okay, uh, the air above must travel faster to reach the end than the air on bottom. This creates a vacuum pulling the kite upward. And here we have the kites going up into the air. Okay, it's been a real joy to be with you this first time, and I hope you enjoyed it. This is Chuck Jones with River City Kites, 5519 Highway 153, grand opening, April, uh, May, May 16th, okay? To Lou.